Hello and welcome to part two of the cursed Macintosh SE. If you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend starting there because, well, we opened this thing up and we found a lot of crazy stuff inside. So in this episode, we're going to make some decisions about what we're going to do with this machine, what we're going to do with all these crazy mods, how far we're going to restore it, and really what this machine is going to look like. So I think you're going to enjoy this. We're going to delve back into this machine. So stay tuned. So in the last episode, when we tore this thing apart, we found that in addition to having this SCSI CD-ROM and this one gigabyte jazz drive, there's also an actual full size hard drive taped to the top of the jazz drive in there. And only the CD-ROM and the hard drive were actually connected. The jazz drive was not connected. And this thing did not want to boot from the hard drive. In fact, it was this external jazz drive that had a disk with an actual startup folder on it. So today we have a couple of options and I have a few ideas. And in the last video, I asked you to put in the comments below what you thought we should do to this machine. And well, there were a lot of very strong opinions, but most of you seem to be on my side of trying to take these mods as far as they will go and try to do them as nicely as possible. And well, that's the direction we're gonna go. So to do that, uh, a couple of things we have to do. We have to see what's going on with the CD-ROM drive, or maybe we'll, we'll probably just replace this with something else. And then I'm trying to think what we should do with the hard drive and the jazz drive here because, well, I'm a little bit worried about power because this power supply was never really intended to run three power hungry drives all at the same time. One thing we could do is use a SCSI to SD and this one I have is pretty nice because I have the bracket for it and they also make this bracket in black and one thing we could do is just replace this jazz drive with this SCSI to SD and I think that would look pretty nice and we might you know want to paint this in the same exact paint as the rest of the case but then we have access to this nice little boot drive right up front but then it's a little bit redundant with that old hard drive in there and I like the look of this jazz drive in there I mean when have you ever seen a jazz drive in anything, let alone shoehorned into the front of an SE30. So that would mean maybe we should replace the hard drive with this. And that's probably the smart thing because how long do SCSI hard drives, mechanical hard drives really last? And then we could do something cool with this, like take it off the bracket, mount it up there on top of the jazz drive, and then run a micro USB cable out the back of the machine and then be able to access the contents of the SD card. And we could maybe put that cable out the Kensington lock in the back. So then comes the question of this CD-ROM drive. And it makes a lot of horrible, horrible noises and just likes to open and close itself randomly. It doesn't have the button in here anymore, just the little metal contact inside. So we could try to fix it, but I kind of like the idea of just replacing it. And fortunately, I have a whole stack of SCSI optical drives right here. And in this stack, we have just a regular kind of plain Jane CD-ROM drive. This middle one is actually a SCSI DVD-ROM, which could be interesting. When have you ever seen a Mac SE with a DVD? And this top one is a TIAC. And I'm kind of leaning towards this one because I like how the front faceplate looks with kind of this extra relief here that kind of goes along with the theme in the front of the SE case. And this actually doesn't just slide out like a regular CD-ROM drive. This flips open and the tray comes out. So it's pretty cool. And plus, I know that it works because I've used this in other Macs very recently. So let's crack this thing back open and see what we can do. So now we have to fight to get this motherboard out of here again because the access to pull the power connector out of the motherboard is 
hidden and obstructed behind all of these cables here. So hopefully I can get this again without damaging it. And in the last video, several people much smarter than I did point out that yes, it does look like these capacitors are leaking, especially I think C13, because you can see dullness around it, which is generally a telltale sign of a leak. So I will definitely have to have this recapped. My own personal soldering skills are pretty subpar. These Hulk hands are not very delicate. All right, now to see if I can figure out how to finagle these drives out of here. All right, so with all these cables removed, you can see a little more clearly everything that's going on in here. And we have, of course, our hard drive just taped to the top of the jazz drive and our CD-ROM drive underneath it. And I guess we're just gonna have to cut this really crinkly old tape off of here. It sounds disgusting. Oh my God. My handy dandy professional computer scissors from the dollar store. Oh, the tape is like dusty. It's like tape with little bits of string inside the tape. That's terrible. Every time I cut it, there's like little poofs of tape dust. All right. The hard drive has been removed from its mounting bracket of tape. Internal jazz drive is free, which just leaves our CD-ROM drive, which does appear to be screwed into place. And we have the CD-ROM down here secured by at least one screw here, which is a weird spot. And then of course, more of our disgusting tape. It looks like maybe this screw is also for the CD-ROM. And you gotta love just this mix of flathead screws and Torx screws and Phillips head screws, just all jumbled together to make life easier. And another fun thing I just noticed, if you look right in here, they actually had to slice part of the side of the power supply kind of in this weird uneven arc, I guess to fit the CD-ROM in place. So that definitely would kind of forestall replacing this power supply directly, but it kind of leads credence to another thing that I was interested in trying. Because when I posted about this machine to the MacYak Discord server, one of the suggestions from Daniel at Tekken Music was a video where JDW replaced the innards of the power supply with that from a C-Sonic. And it's actually very in-depth, easy to follow walkthrough. So I think I might try that. And that way I can preserve the modification done to the metal of the power supply and still maybe not be cutting it so close with power, trying to power up all of these drives. And unfortunately, it does look like this is glued on here. So the bezel 
for the CD-ROM is glued to the bezel for the Mac. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe separate it with this used guitar pick that's kind of sharp around the edges, but it really seems to be in there. Well, plan B, I think I can just push this CD-ROM away from the front bezel itself. All right, we're free. Look at that. And it's got tape dust all over it. And I see they cleverly used a couple of square washers as spacers. So that's uh, nice and professional. All right, I got a lot of gunk off the jazz drive here and it's no longer that sticky. And I think that's the only one I'm going to really clean up because I think that's the only one that we should really put back in here. We've got this hard drive here, but this is very power hungry. And I think we should put the SCSI to SD in place of the hard drive. And then this CD-ROM is going to be replaced. And we can see they took a lot of liberties with this, including uh, drilling some, I guess, more convenient screw holes in here. Well, before we go too far, I think we should try and see if some of these drives actually work in this machine. So I've got this new, more manageable SCSI cable here, and I have a Molex extender with a splitter with a nice three uh, Molex connectors on the end of it, so we can see if it can handle three drives. And we don't have to futz around trying to put the drives inside the machine to test them. And I'm gonna start with the TAC drive and the SCSI to SD because I know both of these work. I've just recently used them in nearly as old of a Mac as this is. And for the SCSI to SD, I'm going to use this one gigabyte SD card that actually has system eight on it from my UMAC Super Mac S900. And it should boot this maybe a little slowly, but the machine, now that it has the um, Big Mess of Wires 32-bit clean ROM card in it, is perfectly capable of booting Mac OS 8 and 8.1. All right, here goes nothing. The Mac itself is alive. And we'll tell it to boot from ROM disk and see if we can see the SCSI to SD. Yeah, we've got the SCSI to SD right here and uh, it sees all that good stuff in there. So let's see if we can instead just boot off of it. And let's see if our TAC drive works. So let's pop in our disk titled SE30 stuff that we discovered inside the original CD-ROM drive. Hey, the drive works. It says that disk is unreadable, but it works. That's amazing. Let's see if we can read another disk. I have my 6200 CDs restore disk with OS 7 on here. And no, it doesn't seem to register that disk at all. Huh. 
How about a PowerBook 1400 Restore CD with 8.0? Does not seem to like that disc either. So it's probably the brand. This TAC is probably very finicky with the brands of burn CDs it can take. I've had good luck with these Philips CDs. So this is the UMAX S900 OS8 Restore Disc. And it recognizes that it's a disc, but won't read it. All right, let's see if we can boot off of the SCSI to SD. Nope, this startup disc will not work on this Macintosh. All right, well, just out of curiosity, I wonder if that DVD-ROM does work. Nope, the DVD seems to be broken. All right, well, while we're in here, I've got a brand new 16 gigabyte SD card that I guess we can initialize for the Mac. So one thing that I really want to do today is replace the antique fan in this thing because it is extremely loud and annoying, especially when I'm trying to film with this. So we're going to replace that with a Noctua NF A625 12 volt fan, 60 millimeters by 25 millimeters. And if you want to know why I picked this fan, I'm going to link to a video from JDW below where he goes in depth on fan replacement options for old compact Macs and... To my eye, this was the best one because not only is it practically silent, but it's about as powerful as the original fan that was in this machine. So if you're gonna do this yourself, just make sure you get the 12 volt version because this also comes in a five volt version and that will not work. And when you watch JDW's video, you'll see that he carefully and meticulously disassembles this whole machine down to taking the analog board off and then unhooking all of these snaps here and while that's the smart thing to do, I think it runs a little counter to the spirit of this machine. So we're going to take the lazy way out and we're just going to undo two of these snaps and then we'll be able to remove the fan here. And then you've got the four screws holding in the fan bracket just directly in the PCB here. So there's a metal bracket that holds the fan and just these four screws screwing it directly into the analog board PCB. So we'll just pop these four screws out. And our fan is now free. Well, mostly free because the fan is still connected to the power wires, which are soldered directly to the analog board. So you have a couple options. One of them is to desolder the wires, but they're all the way run back there and there's uh, hot glue holding them in place. So we're gonna go with the alternate method, which is we're gonna cut this thing loose. And then we're going to take the new fan and just splice the wires together. And that'll have us as good as new with very little effort. All right, so we've connected black to black, yellow to red, and we've made sure our fan is blowing this way. And it looks pretty good in there. All right, so we haven't had any luck with any of the random SCSI optical drives that I've had just laying around. So I decided to pull the CD-ROM drive out of my UMAC Super Mac uh, because I know that one works. And 
I've plugged it in here to the SE30 and we'll see if this works on this machine. And if it doesn't work, then there's something much deeper going on. So let's give this a shot. Our fan is working nicely. We'll boot into the ROM disk here. All right, disk opens. We'll pop in our SE30 stuff CD that we've been dying to read. Hey, look at that. It works. We've got our SE30 stuff loaded up. And we've got System 6, System 7 folders, a music folder with Bach and Abbott and Costello and all sorts of stuff. So I wonder if he was using this. Yeah, here's a system folder. I wonder if he was using this disk in the CD-ROM drive as the boot disk and then doing all of his work on those jazz drives because I think the jazz drives are probably a lot slower than the CD-ROM is. So we'll explore this disk in a bit, but first I want to pop system 761 onto that SD card fresh from a CD. All right, install Mac OS. This program does not run on this computer model. That's all right, we have ways around that. Ugh. All right, let's install something else. Okay, plan B. Let's copy some of the stuff over from the SE30 stuff CD onto our SD card, specifically the system folder, and we'll see what system the original developer of this monstrosity wanted to run on here. All right, and I guess let's see if we can boot from the SD card now. This startup disk was created with minimal software and will not work on this Macintosh model. Oh, geez. All right, so we've made some progress here and for some reason it doesn't want to boot off of the SCSI to SD card. It just hangs at welcome to Macintosh forever. And, uh, but we do have our working CD-ROM drive out of our UMAC Super Mac, which, uh, you know, I was planning to upgrade that to a DVD anyway, so not so bad. And uh, while I was fiddling around with this stuff, I found that using a guitar pick, I was able to start to separate the old CD-ROM faceplate from the rest of the case. So I think I'm going to call this episode here. And as far as what's next for this machine, we're going to of course, see if I can figure out why this doesn't want to boot all the way and take off this old CD-ROM faceplate so we can mount our nice working CD-ROM in there and then I think paint this whole thing black again. That's what most of you said you wanted to see and that's what I want to see. So I think that's what we're going to do. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe down below. 
Thank you very much for watching.